Please receive Motown great Detroit's own Mr. Smokey Robinson. At Levi Stubbs, the Four Tops funeral a few years ago here, Smokey had all of the Motown uh, recording artists to come and to stand at the casket. And I looked and I saw Kings and Walkers and, and gray hair and no hair. And I kept looking at them and looking at Smokey. <laughs> and I said, I want what you drinking and eating. <laughs> Give Smokey Robinson a hand. He'll be followed by the Clark sisters. I didn't know where you were going to go with that. <laughs> um, so I'm about um, eight years old, and I'm outside and I'm playing with my neighborhood friends, with Sackhead and Phoebe and Ollie, and we're shooting marbles because it was in a time when kids were able to play outside, you know? So I don't even know if boys know what that is anymore, but. Um, Richard Ross, another one of our friends, came around, and there's a new guy with him. And he introduced him, he said, this is Cecil. So we all, you know, like boys do, we started playing, and after a while we went around to see Cecil's new house, because they had just moved to Detroit from Buffalo. And we go in, and we're walking around the house, looking at, and I'm seeing stuff that I had never seen, because it wasn't nearly like my house, because, <laughs> You know, somebody broke in my house, they better be bringing something. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, we, we, we're walking around the house and, um, and I hear music, the piano being played, and this voice that sounds like a little girl singing. And I go and look in that room and I see you, and you're there, and you, you're singing, and that was my first meeting and my first sight of you. And um, from that moment on, almost we have been so, so close and so tight. And um, I, I didn't know, especially this soon, that I was going to be having to say goodbye to you or farewell or whatever. We've seen everybody, all the people that I mentioned earlier pass on and go. And we talked about it many times how we were the two who were, who were left out of all our neighborhood friends. Uh, we were the longest ones. We weren't the only two left, but we were the longest ones. So now my longest friend has gone home and you want to be with our father like we all have to do one of these days. And I know you're up there and you're celebrating with your family and with all of our neighborhood friends who have gone, and you're going to be one of the featured voices in the choir of angels because, you know, you'd have to be. <laughs> I also know, you know, I've been on the road and I've been watching the celebration of your life from everywhere. And I've been doing interviews from everywhere, from all over the world. In fact, the last one I did was from uh, Brazil. And the station that I was talking on covered all of South America. So the world is celebrating you. And the world is mourning you. And the world is going to miss you. And I know that I'm going to miss you so much because I miss our talks. And we would talk for hours sometimes, just talking about really anything we wanted to talk about or nothing. And the last conversation we had, you were telling me that um, you were going to do your movie. And you wanted to know who I wanted to play me. <laughs> so I told you I was going to leave that up to you because um, you, you, you are so special. And, um, a while back, we did a, a mini-series on uh, The Temptations' life. And um, 
for that movie, I, 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 did a score for, I did the score for the movie and I had to write a song for Melvin Franklin, who was another one of our close, close people. And um, I'm sure he won't mind if I sing a little bit of it for you because it fits you so perfectly in my life. Really gonna miss you. It's really gonna be different without you. For the rest of my life, gonna be thinking about you. I'll miss you, my buddy. I'll miss you, my friend. I know that my love for you will never end, will never end, and I'm going to love you forever. <laughs> 